Welcome to my lecture on uh, GBM and the uh, common diseases that can affect it. Uh, so glomerular basal membrane is very unique and a very interesting structure. Um, it almost looks boring when you look at it uh, with uh, only these three layers, lamina densa, lamina rara interna and externa. And you can see that the uh, podocytes also attach to it from one side and endothelium from the other side. But there is so much more to it than just uh, these three membrane layers. Um, and I will try to, to discuss this over the next few slides. Um, so the basal membrane is actually composed of different uh, components that you can see here. Uh, main one being collagen 4. Um, collagen 4 has these uh, um, uh, six alpha chains, one through six. And uh, it forms really the, the main uh, uh, basic uh, GBM structure. Uh, so it's the main building block of the GBM. Um, so these uh, uh, single chains uh, associate with each other to form different triplets or protomeres. And the main ones are shown here to the right. So you see alpha 112, uh, which is the most common um, protomere. And uh, you see alpha 3, 4, and 5, which is actually the most important one for the uh, glomerular basal membrane. Uh, and it's, it's made in a really uh, different fashion, and it's a very tough um, uh, form of uh, collagen 4. Uh, these different chains are placed, or actually their genes, are uh, placed on different chromosomes. And um, uh, those are chromosome 13. 2 and X. So you can actually imagine that different defects uh, would result in different types of inheritance from autosomal dominant and recessive to X-linked if you have defects in alpha 5 uh, chains. Um, as I was mentioning, uh, these uh, uh, monomeres will uh, combine into trimeres or uh, uh, protomeres. And uh, then they will actually form uh, the bottom line of the basal membrane. And as you can see here, uh, in the mature GBM, uh, two different uh, protomeres will combine to, to form a hexamere. And uh, you will also have these 7S uh, boxes. So it looks really very uh, complicated, uh, but there is actually a system to this madness. And uh, um, uh, whatever is going on here, it's creating actually a really tough uh, basal membrane. Uh, the chains are also uh, intertwined and, and connected by these uh, disulfide bonds that are very actually uh, tough and uh, making this uh, basal membrane uh, one of the toughest uh, we have. And uh, that's actually really very important because in the glomerulus you have such environment where you really need to have uh, a tough uh, membrane uh, so it can sustain the pressures and uh, demands of uh, uh, glomerular function. We are, uh, however, not born with um, uh, that type of collagen 4. Uh, if you see the top panel here in the uh, embryonic phase or immature phase, you will have uh, more common 112 uh, chains actually creating the uh, GBM. And as uh, the demand uh, grows and uh, uh, our development goes on, uh, the um, uh, 112 will be switched by 345 uh, uh, triplets and um, the, the much tougher basal membrane will actually be formed. Um, and uh, therefore, in mature uh, glomerulus, you will actually see uh, a different uh, type of uh, glomerular basal membrane. Well, if you have a defect, genetic defect, for example, in uh, some of these uh, chains or genes uh, that, that encode for these chains, um, as seen actually on the bottom here, you will develop hereditary nephritis or Alport syndrome. Uh, if you have defects in one or two alpha chains, alpha one or two, uh, you will actually uh, probably develop a, a condition that is incompatible with life and uh, you will not even be able to talk about these defects. Uh, but if you have um, uh, defects in um, uh, chains 3, 4, and 5, 
you will affect only glomerular basal membrane uh, and inner ear, and therefore you will develop um, uh, Alport syndrome uh, that usually is uh, manifested by renal failure and uh, hearing loss. So this is how normal GBM looks like, uh, and this is how uh, GBM in uh, uh, Alport syndrome would look like. So the, the uh, basal membrane actually got really completely chewed up and destroyed because it's not made of uh, uh, tough uh, collagen, but it's made probably of alpha-1, 1, 1, 2 triplets that are really not making tough collagen that is needed for, for GBM. Uh, you can see also a lot of... Uh, podocyte effacement here, and that happens because the, the membrane is not normal, so the podocytes cannot attach to it normally. Uh, and um, you see shattering or uh, basket woven appearance of the um, uh, lamina densa in uh, um, Alport syndrome. Um, in some people, the genetic defect may not be as dramatic, and the membranes may appear thin but otherwise normal. And I would say uh, a few percent of general population, um, probably around 5% of general population, may have such findings, and they present with asymptomatic hematuria, um, uh, and usually in the syndrome of benign familial hematuria. So you will have a bunch of uh, family members that will be affected, um, and uh, they're otherwise asymptomatic. So it's important to know because this is a common, uh, a common phenotype. Um, Patients with Alport syndrome eventually end up on dialysis or uh, they may receive kidney transplant. And then if you pay attention to the right, um, you see actually that uh, they may develop uh, different kinds of antibodies because their immune system does not recognize normal GBM as normal and they will build all sorts of antibodies. Many of them are non-pathogenic, but sometimes they may develop um, uh, what we call anti-GBM disease. So what is anti-GBM disease? It's a very severe form of uh, glomerulonephritis where you develop antibodies against um, um, uh, components of uh, GBM. Um, and uh, here we have a, an example of normal GBM. As you know, uh, this is how these uh, three, four, five uh, uh, triplets form hexamers. But if you have some kind of oxidative stress um, or injury to, the, um, to these triplets, they may start to dissociate. Uh, some of the things would be environmental uh, factors, uh, including smoking, where you can actually have dissociation of these triplets. And then uh, some of these uh, epitopes that are usually hidden in a structure, they become really uh, unveiled, and uh, uh, your immune system may create antibodies against uh, those epitopes. And then when you look at the immunofluorescence from these patients, uh, you will actually see diffuse um, uh, uh, anti-GBM effect, which is basically linear staining for IgG, because this is how antibodies against uh, glomerular basal membrane will bind to the glomerular basal membrane. And uh, uh, the initial injury that will result from uh, this antibody binding and complement activation will actually include segmental inflammation, as you see here. Um, then you will have segmental fibrinoid necrosis uh, and uh, extravasation of fibrin and blood into the urinary space. And then this will result in uh, proliferation of epithelial cells that we call uh, crescents. So cellular crescents will form, and um, you see actually Bowman capsules also disrupted and so on. So anti-GBM usually presents with crescentic GN, and uh, I actually showed you here uh, how that happens. But uh, not all crescentic GNs are due to anti-GBM. As you can see here, uh, not uh, only that you can see linear staining in crescentic GN, but you can have granular staining, uh, for example, in immune complex diseases such as lupus, uh, post-infectious, and so on. Uh, but sometimes we see posse immune disease with no deposits, and that's usually related to uh, ANCA uh, glomerulonephritis. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video on basic glomerular uh, basal membrane structure and some common diseases that can uh, affect the GBM.